Hey guys and welcome back, this is James and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this little lizard skin uh, card holder. It's the first time I'm using lizard skin, I believe this is iguana but I'm not totally sure, it was very dried out when I got it and I had some interesting times using this. Um, this is also the first time I've tried doing some edge painting, edge coating or edge, yeah, edge painting basically and it was a interesting learning curve on that one so I'll show you how I did this and hopefully you enjoy. So as you can see I'm using a very old lizard skin here. Again, I'm not sure what it is. I picked it up at a like yard sale sort of thing with a bunch of other leathers and they had this uh, so I just grabbed it thinking I could play around with it and I did. Now I did use Fibing's black uh, dye to dye this, the pro dye or oil dye, uh, thinking it would be the best thing for it. Unfortunately I don't have the footage for that but this is the final result. And uh, I could see that a lot of the dye was still just coming off when I was rubbing it or in my fingers. Uh, so I was trying a few different techniques and you'll see as we go along. Um, I also went ahead and dyed one piece of veg tan leather. It's 1.2 millimeters thick. The pattern for this you can find in the description below. Uh, it is something you can buy online. It's a PDF pattern you can download. And it's really, really cheap. So if you want to try it out yourself, go for it. The first thing I decided to do is try and use some basic shoe polish to seal in the colors and also add a bit more pigments to where the, the colors were, were disappearing. And throughout this process I tried a few different uh, shoe polishes and uh, you'll see at the end that it, it's not... The result isn't really great because I don't think the dye took very well to the, the lizard skin so eventually I had to re-dye it and just use some very simple uh, Saphir shoe polish and the final result works great but in the process it was a bit complicated to do and as you can see I'm just writing down, marking down the template here which I've got printed out and glued onto a piece of cardboard which is why it looks like it's an old uh, it's an old box for some some sort of keyboard or something. Uh, first things first I always apply Fibings Neat Foot Oil to any piece I'm about to dye two reasons. First of all, it helps nourish the oil in case it's been left out for a long time, in case it's dry. And secondly, I believe, not as hard to really, I'm not that much of an expert, I can't tell you for sure yet, but I believe, um, well at least from what I can see and from what I can hear on forums and stuff, read, having a piece of leather that has got some oils in it or maybe just been sprayed slightly or dampened slightly really helps with the leather soaking in and helps get a more homogenous uh, dye to your final piece. Well, whatever the case may be, I like to always give it a coat of Fibing's Neat Soot Oil before I start, or any any basic oil of that matter, uh, Neat Soot Oil, not necessarily Fibing's, because I find it really helps make sure the leather doesn't crack, as the dye will dry out the leather process. It will dry out the leather, not the dyeing process, sorry guys. So I've let the, the lizard skin sit with the um, shoe polish on it, hoping once again that the shoe polish would absorb into that and really seal up uh, that skin and make sure that the, the dye doesn't come out, that the pigments don't come out. Um, not sure what the exact process is, whether I was using the right dye, it, it, it's neat sort of pro oil dye or pro dye or oil dye. They do have a more uh, substantial dye, which is the regular dye, which is actually a bit tougher, uh, a bit stronger and might have worked better. Hard to tell, I'd love to know if you guys are used to working with this kind of skin, what you guys do to dye your skins if you dye them, because you probably you could also buy them pre-dyed. And I'm about to start using the, uh, the, the edge paint for the very first time and there are surely many ways of going about this, so don't take mine as being a reference. I can just tell you what I've done and how it worked or didn't work for me. But if you're going to do it yourself, I also recommend you going onto a forum or maybe Reddit or something like that to get a really good idea of what the pros do. I am by no means a pro. This is my very first time using it. So I decide to rough up the end of my leather pieces, the edge of the piece. Uh, the idea behind this being that the uh, edge paint will then adhere better to the fibers once they've been roughed up and will give me a proper base coat. There will be many coats applied every time to all the edges and uh, each coat will then be subsequently sanded, sanded flat, sanded down. And the idea with this first coat is that it has to permeate that leather, has to grab hold of the fibers and has to really provide me a base coat that's going to be strong. Uh, and that will not detach from leather throughout the, the whole process. Uh, 
So the second thing that I learned very quickly, um, let it dry. Uh, it can sound stupid, but th this takes a long time to dry and even a couple hours later, it may not be fully dry. Give it time to dry. <laughs> Uh, I made that mistake and I've had to start, it, it just smears it all up. Now it wasn't a big issue for me, but it's, it sounds stupid to say this really, but it was one of the things I learned, so I'm sharing with you guys. I am now going to be sticking the outside skin, lizard skin, to the inside which has been dyed red. Um, the pockets are black, the inside is red, the, the stitching I'll be using will be red as well. Hopefully this gives a nice contrast and this will provide my lizard skin with a solid backing. It will mean that hopefully it will be flatter and look better, but also it will have more rigidity. Right now it's way too supple to, to be able to be used on its own. And uh, this way I can actually do something I'm more used to. I don't, I've never worked with lizard skin before, um, so I didn't really know where to start off with. However, I have done this in the past. I have uh, used a different material which has been glued onto some veg tan leather uh, in able to make stuff in the past. So I know this process, I know I can pull something out of it, I'm not sure what yet, but I definitely can do something. And once that's done, go ahead and mark around the pattern once more. I had originally marked down the pattern on the inside of the leather just to get a reference. And here I'm going to be using simple Kiwi Parade Gloss. Um, again, I'm still trying out a lot of different uh, shoe polishes, I'm still hoping that I can find a holy grail of shoe polishes. I think Sophia do an amazing job and if you're in doubt and you, you don't, you've got a bit of extra cash, go for Sophia. They have a huge range of products in all forms and colors and shapes and they always, always are amazing. They are a bit more expensive. Uh, actually, no, that's, that's a lie. They are very much more expensive, but they are worth it in the long run, at least I think, and you'll see that's the final product I've been using. But I do have lots of old uh, shoe polishes lying around which I try to use up from time to time on things like this. As you see, I sanded off the first coat, and the first coat basically you want to sand it pretty much completely off. Uh, there was very little remaining actually. Uh, it's hard to tell on camera, but there was very little remaining of the first coat once it was sanded properly. And the second coat, again, you'll be sanding it a lot more than you might want necessarily. But that's because you want it to be as flat as possible. And you'll see the final result is actually quite, quite good. Um, but before the final buff on those edges, you can still tell where it's the, the two layers of, of um, leather come together. Here I'm just skiving off because, again, uh, these are different pieces glued together, so the sides are going to be quite hefty, quite thick. And yes, my skiving technique still needs a lot of practice, but as this is on the inside and will not be visible, as long as my edges are all the same size, I'm not too worried about uh, not having a clean cut. Uh, just making sure that my edges are all roughly the same dimension, the same thickness uh, before gluing it all up. And yeah, for those who are curious, I'm using a, a Verger Blanchard skiving knife, which is the, the piece of metal you're seeing there. I keep them, well, at least I try to keep them religiously sharp using a very fine stone when necessary, but most of the time just sticking to having um, just a, a piece of, of a leather with some jeweler's green compound on it. And I'll strop my, my, my knives uh, before every use. And so once I'm happy with the finish, I believe there are only two coats here, I go ahead and give it a last little uh, hit of the 240 grit sandpaper before buffing it down with a piece of cloth. And I found this was giving me a very nice finish. Um, I, for the pockets, I only needed two layers, I think, of the, or three layers of edge coat, but uh, not as much as I actually thought I'd need, uh, simply because it was one layer and I didn't need to hide as many defects as later. Uh, always, it's cold in my, in my <laughs> it is cold in my workshop, so I love having a, a good hot uh, milk chocolate to keep me going. Not milk chocolate, milk coffee to keep me going. I don't know why I keep saying chocolate for the, when I'm talking about coffee. No, coffee, always coffee. No, never chocolate, coffee, coffee, coffee. Um, and yes, watching paint dry is just as fascinating as watching glue dry. But once it is dried, uh, go ahead and assemble the different pieces, hit them down and mark out where your holes will be. Ah, sorry, sorry, I'm going too fast. No, first things first, make sure your edges are really, really straight. Again, you're gonna be adding on some edge paint, so you need to make sure that everything is in, all the cuts are very precise and that all the pieces come together very nicely. 
Once you're happy with those edges, they can be quite straight. Just make sure you want to, um, well, this is how I'd proceed. I then made sure that my corners were nice and even as well and spent quite a lot of time sanding to make sure that the, uh, just all, all the edges weren't as, how can I put this without showing you on a diagram? This is really complicated. So once you've cut your edge, you're gonna have a nice straight finish, but you want to round out the edges, especially on the lizard skin, as I'm doing right there, uh, to just make sure you don't have a really hard edge. Now, maybe maybe some uh, pros out there would tell me that actually, no, it's better just to keep it as is and just to slab on the first coat of edge paint. But I wanted to do it this way, just to make sure that if anything goes wrong, at least I'm back to basics that I understand, that I know, uh, with some nice edges that feel good before going on and doing too much. Now you can mark out your where your stitching is going to be. Uh, I'm doing it about one millimeter away or 1.5 millimeters away. This is what it looks like with the holes stitched. I'm using Crimson Hide irons for the stitching holes. Uh, this is what it looks like all stitched up. And as you can see, the red on black on the lizard side doesn't show up tremendously well, but on this side it looks really good. So I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, those edges are looking really quite fabulous. I'm very pleased, especially the red on red there, that red dye, not as red as I'd like, but, but I actually really like the finished result. This is the first coat of edge paint going on here. Make sure it's nice and even all the way around. Again, a lot of this will be sanded off uh, throughout your first coat, so don't worry too much about getting it perfect. One big issue I was having is bubbles forming, which I didn't really know how to address, but they tend to just go away on their own when the paint is drying. So. Don't worry about it too much. Sand off lots of it. Second coat is going on now. Sand off the second coat again and uh, apply a third coat. This is going very, very fast, but this is over the course of a few days, letting it dry profusely between every coat. Sand off that uh, third coat and get ready to put on a fourth coat. Yes, I think I'm counting correctly. I believe I'm counting correctly. And that is what it looks like after the fourth coat. And I'm really pleased with it, but Look very closely. You can actually see where the different pieces of leather join. And I'm gonna show you right now. There we go. It feels good, but you can see where the leather joins. Now, this is not an issue, really, because once you've sanded it down, this is what I do. Once I've sanded it down, I go ahead and give it a nice last, very, very small sand, uh, 240 grit sandpaper. And I decide to try different techniques for finishing it up. And the first one I decide to try is using gum trag, uh, which is what I usually do for finishing uh, edges. And I thought this would be a great way of cleaning it up and, and trying out something new. And I found it just didn't really do much. It did, just didn't feel good. So I then tried just buffing it without, and already the finish was much, much better. And finally, this was for me the holy grail of finishes for this type of edge painting was beeswax. I didn't expect it to work this well, but just a light coat of beeswax, buff off the beeswax, and I find it really does an amazing job in combination with the cloth that you're using to smooth out that edge one last time and give it a nice waxy shine. It feels silky smooth on my fingers. It looks incredible. It's taken away most, if not all, of the small uh, issues that I was seeing or in, on the edges, um, but really love the beeswax. And as you can see, there are some spots here where the dye just wasn't taking. So I went ahead and very carefully re-dyed my piece. Now I would never ever suggest re-dyeing at this stage of the process simply because if you get any of that dye on the, on the stitching or on the sides or whatever, that is really going to impact your piece. And finally, buff it off with a quick brush, add on the Saphir Médaille d'Or, or Médaille d'Or as they say in French, not Médaille d'Or, which is totally wrong, Médaille d'Or, uh, and buff that off. And to be honest, just a simple light coat of this stuff just makes it look really gorgeous. I'm not a huge fan of the stitching on this side, which I find just doesn't really show, but I love the look of the lizard skin. I love the edges on this finished piece. I love the way the stitches uh, look on the inside of the wallet, of the card holder. I'm really, really pleased with the finished result here and I have to say, I'm impressed, very impressed by the way these edges are holding up. I was trying to fold it in different directions to see how the, the edge paint would hold up and it looks like it's holding up fine. So we'll have to see in time if this uh, works as well as simple burnishing, but so far I am really pleased with my first attempt. 
and uh, hope you guys like the look of it as well. Nice and shiny, nice and buffed up. Those edges are looking great as well and they feel great. And yeah, it's folding nicely. It's looking really good. I'm quite happy with this one. For the first try, not bad at all. Have to give us another go. There you go guys, that is how I made this little card holder. Hopefully you've enjoyed and maybe learned something on the way. I certainly learned a lot. And if you guys know how to properly address uh, dried out lizard skins of any type, please let me know in the comments below. I believe it's, it's something I'd love to improve upon, definitely improve upon, and I still need to learn a lot. If you want to pick up this little card holder, it will be added to my Etsy page. Again, everything's in the description below. All the links you can find are down there. Make sure you pick it up if you want it because there is only one of them. If you're not lucky enough to grab this one, you do have lots of other things up there anyway, uh, small card holders and other things that I make. Feel free to have a look at that and let me know what your thoughts are. In the meantime, guys, thanks a ton for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.